I would like to get uh, agenda approval. Um, I have one addition uh, with respect to a sewer forgiveness fee. I can do that along with the other one that's already on the agenda. Okay. I'd like to add something briefly in regards to the Council of the Arts and to make sure that we have a uh, discussion in regards to the Cable Commission moving forward with the broadcasting. Okay. And also, I know we need an executive session at the end for legal. Yes. Okay. One for me as well regarding litigation. So, so we'll both have for pending litigation. Yes. Actually, yeah. and the third one from, I have two involved in litigation. Well, yeah. so three yeah. matters all involved in legal action. Any actions that you guys need? Uh, there may be action afterwards, yes. yes. <coughs> also, I would like to add we have uh, individuals from Drescher and Malecki for our audit that are here, um, it's on the, uh, the public's uh, work session, it's not on ours. So with that, I would ask that we motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, do the abstract approval, Councilwoman Serrato. I move to approve the regular abstract of claims number 2128 to 2349 and recommend payment in the amount of $636,216.10 plus a post to audit of $16,858.76. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Supervisor, I apologize. I have one more addition to the agenda that will be with regard to the uh, motions with regard to the establishment of the top line water district. Okay. I will make a motion to amend the amended agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. I would like to ask uh, representatives for the Treasurer and Lecky to uh, step up to the microphone. I'm Matt Montalvo, the Treasurer and Lecky, and with me is Carl Widmer. Uh, we're here to present the results of the town's external audit for the year ended December 31st, 2016. Um, what I'll do first is just kind of run through some of the, the required communications and then I'll turn it over to Carl uh, to go through some of the financial statement updates. Uh, so we did provide a handout uh, for, for the uh, town board members to, to uh, uh, look along. Um, the first piece is really, you know, the, the format will be, you know, the first the required communications and that is to clarify what our responsibility is. Um, as it pertains to the audit. And that it really is to form and express an opinion on the financial statements. We don't accept responsibility for the preparation of the books and records. That's on management. Um, but we come in as an independent third party and express opinion that the financial statements fairly represent your financial position. Um, so we do plan on moving forward with what's referred to as an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements. So that's really the best you can do from an audit standpoint. You know, we believe they fairly represent your financial position uh, as of the year ended December 31st, 2016. Um, no significant difficulties encountered during the audit. Uh, we received full open access to the books and records. Um, we were able to perform a full scope audit uh, in accordance with our standards and express that opinion on, on the financial statements. Um, as far as a uh, requirement of independence, and that is that all of our staff that work on the audit are free of conflicts of interest with the town. That allows us to be objective in performing the audit. Um, so we were able to do that and, and again, express that opinion on the financial statements. Um, so at this point, what I'll do is we'll get into the financial statement update. I think that's probably what, what everyone's uh, interested in. So I'll turn it over to Carl and then we'll conclude with just some overall observations on the audit. Good evening. Good evening. Um, to start off, we'll be on slide four is where the presentation begins on the financial update. The, the basic format that we included in tonight's presentation is for each of the town's major funds, that being the general fund, the town outside village, highway, water, and sewer funds. So we do a, like a three slide analysis for each fund depicting the year's activity. Then we look at total fund balance and then move into the components of fund balance. So to start, we'll look at the operations trend within the general fund. Um, compared to last year, the town was able to control costs while experiencing not as much of a decrease in revenues. This resulted in an overall increase in fund balance 
or about $130,000 in the general fund. The, the main contributor within revenues, um, dropping a little bit, was the modern tipping fees. Went down almost $100,000. I think that's a trend we've seen over the past few years. Some of these outside sources of revenue coming in are on the decline, and that's a challenge going forward when it comes to the budget, which you're, I'm sure you're experiencing currently. Moving on to the next slide, we take a look at total fund balance. So from 15 into 16, you can see that, that increase of 131,000 last year. That's, that's particularly nice to see after 12, 13, 14, 15, where we experienced use or decrease of fund balance. So a nice recovery year for the general fund after some, some trended spending or use of fund balance. And then when we look at the components of fund balance, you can see that the general fund has moved into primarily all unassigned fund balance. Now that's the portion that we take a look at as um, you know, the available fund balance. It's not already spoken for or restricted by any other uh, means. This is the money that's available to the town to use in their budget, to use for unexpected emergencies, and so on. So at the end of 2016, the town ended up with just over $488,000 in their fund balance. This represents approximately 18% of next year's, the 2017 appropriations. So that, that's a comparison that the GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, um, that's a, a percentage or a ratio that they look at, and they come out with an expression of, the, their recommendation is that you could cover two months of spending, a minimum of two months of spending, which is 16.67%. Uh, we, we went over this last year, if you recall. So when you're looking at the GFLA recommendations, you're right in line with that, in fact, just a bit above. Moving on to the next major fund, being the general town outside village. Revenues did increase, uh, attributed to franchise fees, mortgage tax, and building permits this year. Those, those are going to flow along with the economy year from year. Kind of difficult to predict while expenditures remain rather consistent compared to last year. Uh, we did experience some turnover in the public safety area, so we experienced a little budgetary cost savings there. Had that not turned over, you know, maybe this surplus this year in the Town Outside Village Fund wouldn't have been so, so high. Um, moving on, taking a look at the total fund balance. It, it's a healthy increase in this fund. It went up $181,000 this year in comparison to last year's fund balance. And when we take a look at the components, in all funds other than the general fund, the portion that we're looking at is going to be the assigned for specific use. And that's just some accounting terminology. It, it, it acts as the unassigned fund balance in each of those funds. So that's, that's your $1,281,000 number which represents nearly 42% of next year's budgeted appropriation. So that's a level that the board you know, can determine if you're comfortable with. One thing I want to point out on that slide number nine is if you look at 15 in the years prior, there was some, some gray portion there. Last year was the 267,000. Within that was a portion of money assigned for compensated absences that each of the funds maintained. Uh, we did, did some digging with management this year and came to find that there was no real baseline or actual restriction on those funds that could be provided by the town. So that money did move into the general assigned for specific use. So you can see that that essentially disappeared this year. That's where it went. The money is there. It now lost that designation because there's nothing to support it. And that's going to be a trend across all the funds. Moving on to the highway fund. Uh, a pretty normal year. This is what you could expect. Uh, revenues either staying the same or declining, while expenditures are going to slowly climb up. At the end of the year, the activity resulted in about $60,000 increase to fund balance in the highway fund, which if you move on to slide 11, brings us to that ending fund balance of $510,000. So again, this is a nice, nice increase after 12, 13, 14, where we were trending again using fund balance. Last year was a big recovery year for the highway fund, and 16 again, you know, improved upon that. 
Looking at the components, I'll just touch on that assigned for a specific use is at just about 15% in the highway fund when compared to next year's budget. Moving on to the water district fund. Again, activity was rather consistent with prior years. Um, however, revenues did experience some growth. I'd say primarily attributed to increased fees. We had a dry summer in 16. Um, expenditures didn't experience that increase due to the same weather factor. At the end of the year, their fund balance improved $105,000. Um, looking at the five-year trend on total fund balance and water fund, again, you see the trend of recovery from past years of using fund balance. This year, you were able to improve your fund balance. The aside for specific use and the water district fund represents about 13% when compared to next year's budget, uh, a little bit lower when you compare it to the other funds. And one thing to take note is most of your fund balance in this fund is wrapped up in customer receivables. So there's that lag between billing for the usage and then collecting. So one thing to take note, one a later uh, recommendation we'll add is to revisit your fund balance policy and improve upon that set levels. In this fund, it's particularly important to pay attention to cash flows. Since most of your fund balance is wrapped up in accounts receivable, not yet collected, you want to pay attention to the cash flow in this fund. Last major fund is the sewer fund. Um, you will see 12, 13, 14. That was prior to our working for the town. Uh, previous auditors presented certain inner fund activity within the different sewer districts, gross rather than net. So that, that's the reason for the big drop from 14 to 15 activity. It, it is the same operations. We just chose for the presentation to, to net out the inner funds. It's more appropriate. The activity in sewer fund resulted in $198,000 increase to fund balance. When you look at the total fund balance, this, this fund has maintained a healthy position over the years. And let's say that that is something that a sewer district fund maybe isn't as appropriate to judge on the percentage of next year's annual appropriations or expenditures. Because in funds like these, you have large infrastructure, emergency repairs. So when you look at the level of fund balance, I'd say the board wants to take a look at what's your level of comfort with how much money you have on hand to take care and react to emergencies or uh, maintaining that large infrastructure. Moving on, so that, that wraps up the, the financial update that we'll be including for tonight. Um, moving on to observations, we'd like to report on some of the internal controls and the, the procedures and operations within the office. And overall, we, we have improvements to report. If you recall, in the 2015 report, there was a material weakness regarding prior period adjustments, being that the records weren't accurate enough for us to put an opinion on. It required some large adjustments that we had to do. Um, that finding is not included this year. So it looks like the cleanup that we did last year indeed got us on a, a good starting point, And 16 was a good clean year. Also removed is a finding regarding segregation of duties within the finance office. We found that a lot of tasks were being performed by the same individual without um, another independent person being part of certain cycles. So we reported on that. With the addition of some staffing in that office, that finding has also been addressed. So this year, our, a few of the findings that we want to include are, are listed there, uh, being bank reconciliations. They are being performed. They are reconciling books to the banks. However, there are some best practices that we have shared with the town and want to continue to, to encourage those be used. <coughs> Departmental procedures, policies and procedures. The policies and procedures will include a fund balance policy, certain IT policies, and then also revisiting the purchasing policy too. But the main recommendation that we want to focus on <coughs> this year is a planned use of the restricted funds. The town receives and has opportunities to get some revenue um, maintained generally in the capital projects fund that 
we should, the town should take a look at future plan use and try to align that with an updated fund balance policy and keep levels where you're looking at and talk about future capital improvements, maintaining infrastructure, those types of things, kind of weigh all those in and create a you know, five-year, 10-year lookout. So what's on that to kind of wrap up here? Well, I, guess, I mean, at this point, I'd open up for any questions. I know that was a lot of information um, for the town board. Based on what you presented, the many positives, would you believe that Moody would give us a better bond rating based on this information? Um, well, I mean, I can't, I can't speak for them and what specific indicators they look at, but I think from an objective standpoint, you know, there's certainly improvements that are tangible. Um, that you can present to them and kind of plead, plead that case. Um, so I don't think that it would go any lower. I, I, I mean, um, but it should be favorable. You mentioned a little bit about uh, capital improvement plans in various departments. Obviously, we have uh, different capital <coughs> that we're working with. So, for example, in the, in the Police department, we have vehicles. In the highway department, we have vehicles, but they have a much different life expectancy. Um, could you provide us with a little bit of your assistance with respect to um, best policy for each department, given their differences? Uh, yeah, I mean, sort of not not necessarily right now. I, I mean, yeah, I think in the future that would be one thing that I think between Marty, Tom Board, and yourselves, maybe we could put our heads together to figure out. You know, I I, I know that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to those kind of capital plans. And, and again, with your experience, I would hope that you could bring that to the table. Yeah, we, we, did, we have developed a, a capital planning model that we work at with other entities on. And it, it's pretty customized, you know, customizable. Sure. So, you know, we can have those conversations and, uh, you know, certainly. Wonderful, thank you. I just want the board to know, too, that for the last year, we've been working on both the fund balance policy and the five-year plan. Right. And it's a bunch of notes all over the place that in a file that we are part of the budget process. We're hoping to get that all in so that we are really looking at, and, and not only looking at the five-year plan and what each department needs, but what the possibilities of different funding sources are. So some things may qualify for Greenway reimbursement or, you know, a project where other things won't, you know, where one thing might qualify for using the NIPA infrastructure money, which something else won't. So we're kind of going beyond the normal just a five-year plan and saying, okay, this is what I want. And I've been working with each department on an ongoing basis and trying to figure out exactly what those needs are, what the dollar amounts are, so that we can... You know, our first goal was to get this thing turned around. Understood, We've yeah. done that. Now we're trying to pinpoint exactly going forward and to be looking more than just the immediate need. We want to be looking out for five and even ten years. Yeah, and you want a flexible model to right. you know, that you can adapt to different changes. The other thing I wanted to mention, too, is um, the reason that this year was so critical is because of going to the, the water uh, funding and the bonding. And that's why we've worked so hard at getting those expenses and revenues into control and trying to have a positive fund balance. That is one of the things, if you look at Moody's report right. and what they said, it wasn't so much that we used our fund balance, but that we had so consistently used our fund balance. And so by turning that around, I think that there's a good possibility that we could, you know, at least we won't go far any farther down, but I really want to get that back up if at all possible so that when we go to this bonding in 2018, that will be. At, it makes a huge difference in what it costs the town over the life of the bond. And, you know, a, a single rating can make a difference of three, four hundred thousand dollars. I mean, so it's been very critical for us to work on that and get that back up. There's a question to you and to Marty. Does Moody ask us for an update picture or do we present it to them in the time No, it'll be at the time that we need it. One of the things that we're doing is our ban next year, which is the highway ban, is going to have to go first. We'll probably go first. 
by having it under a, a million dollars, we don't have to seek Moody's uh, a rating, okay? So the first rating that we'll have is when that water line goes to, uh, to bonding. And so we've got a little bit of, you know, hopefully we can get some of 2017 because that water line will probably be a ban initially, which is a lower rate, but it's much shorter time period and will give us a little bit more time to really build that up before we have to go to movies. But it'll be at the time of that bonding is when you go to movies. Okay, moving on to old business. Um, we have the town wide water district. The last meeting we, we had our public hearing and we heard comments from a couple of residents. I've submitted to the board for your consideration three different resolutions that uh, if and when you're ready to uh, move forward with the project, that they need to be considered. Uh, I guess before we get to those, I'll, I'll ask you any, any questions or anything that the board wants to discuss with you. I know we tabled this the last time. We didn't take any action because we only had three board members, so we have everybody here. So I, I would be, uh, I would encourage moving forward on these resolutions myself. If anybody's got any questions for Brian? got a couple. I don't know if it will pertain to you more than if not maybe talk to Bob or water on this. Since that development proposal on grants, people have been coming out of the woodwork for water pressure. Everywhere I go, I get somebody coming up to me and it, 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 there's been a few areas. Uh, Myers Hill, Lower Mountain Road, The Circle, Branson, Richmond. I, it's shame on me for not knowing, but I didn't know we were using, was it a 12-year-old study that testing that we're using for this water line? I don't um, know if it's, we should. The last water model was run in uh, 2007. In 2007. I don't know if there's other, what I don't want is next year to be up here and tell me, well, we got another three miles of water line that has to be corrected <coughs> and start this whole procedure again. I don't know if we should do some testing on other areas. I have, Mike, did you get a chance to do any of them? I asked yeah. you, North how, did they, I tested North Circle. how did they fare? Uh, poorly, like the, like the map indicates. Yeah, we already got Circle and <coughs> Branson testing poorly. I mean, if we need another two miles, <coughs> do we do a, a testing and the, or we? The one on Branson, was, there's no issue. That house is tapped on a 16 inch water line. Oh, that one was okay. It was a circle that was bad. I'm sorry, I'm very okay. I don't know what. Uh, I mean, just like I said, I don't want to be up here next year going through this whole same procedure. We need another two miles of water lines. I think we should uh, redo a test on at least certain areas of the town. Robert, is what you're saying that you, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it all together, right? Right. Now. I don't want to be up here next year and doing the same thing. That makes sense. We, is there? I didn't realize. I mean, the whole town probably could use a new water. If you, I mean, that, that's the thing that the board's got to right now. We're not redoing the entire town's water system for yeah. this project. But there I are going to be additional water projects. In the future. There are going to be water mains that are going to have to be replaced in the future. That's part of the what Marty was talking about is setting this plan forward. So the water department will be part of that is to, what's the long-term plan? You know, which are the worst parts of the town, which, which don't need attention, which do, and setting some type of plan over the years. There are, there are going to be other projects yeah. and other monies you're not getting an no argument will be there, but is there fire hydrants without adequate uh, flow right now that, you know, half of it is a fire and the firemen don't hook up and there's no pressure. And then we're, we're doing this. I don't know. Or I think, I think that would help me out here. Just, I think uh, that's what uh, the, the study kind of shown is that the, the areas that we selected were the, the worst. The worst. Now, I would assume that the, the study would also allow you to do a, a second category of, of seriousness where the tuberculation is, is kind of affected the water flow. Is that right, Mike? I mean, are you able to kind of set a, a second tier, if you will, of, of hot spots or things that if you had additional money or where you would go to look next to say that there's a problem in the water system? Yeah, based on the, the model, I mean, for one thing, the, I can give you a list of the water mains that have been replaced since the 90s, and uh, I can submit this to you. You can look it over, give it to the public to look it over. I can read it off to you if you want. Um, you can't do it all at once. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be too costly. 
since the study was done, they've replaced Mountain View Drive, which was very low. Um, they've replaced uh, Woodland Forest, and now Manhattan Drive. So they progressed, and before that, there's a slew of roads on here from 2003 and beyond before that, the 90s, back to the 2000s. So old, you know, there's been significant improvement in the water lines that have been replaced. Mount View Drive is 11,000 feet. The other uh, areas might be referred to in five or six miles or so thereabouts in 2003. It, it is significant as, and as expansive as this current project that's being contemplated is. It's not going to eliminate the need to pay consistent attention to your infrastructure from now on. Will it be more in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, 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 there's Absolutely. still more cast iron out there. There's, yeah. But if we have a failing <coughs> hydrants already on the circle, then I don't know. But we've already prioritized that these were the most urgent areas that needed to be addressed. I believe we should move forward with those and then still within our own internal budget, see if we can address some of the other issues that have been identified. And, and I asked, well, Mike came to me originally and told us we had these issues. And he worked with Bob Landon on identifying the primary major issues. When we talked about Scarp and Drive, we even talked about that being a smaller project that the highway department, along with the water department, might be able to do with town employees. It's a smaller project. Um, these bigger ones cannot be done with town employees. It's got to be the workout. So, I agree, we're not gonna correct every problem with this project. It's the major, I mean, it's a major thing. The town's gonna to be way better off after this project. Is it gonna be perfect? No. Um, can we make it perfect? I don't I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, we can, at what cost them? That's the problem. Um, Even if uh, two years down the way we want to have an additional project, we can put a bond in for that if we need to. But right now, bond rates are low. We have all this laid out already. Or at the 11th hour with this presentation, I think we should move forward. Yeah, if you change it now, the brakes will be put on the entire process. We're, we're shooting public, for that January time. date. We're going to get the best bids yeah. from the contractors. And I got to agree with Councilman Guy. I do too. Mm -hmm. well, I just wanted to touch a point. Yeah. I know we've been a lot of calls. and. They put a development in on Bronson over there, and we're already having water pressure issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, that wouldn't affect. There's a 16 inch water line run down, runs down Bronson. Okay. And a 12 down Upper Mountain Road. There's so, a lot of water there. <clears throat> did, did we determine if this comes later how we're paying for this? Does this come later at a later time? The way the the way the, the map plan report are set out is that the 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 annual debt service will be funded through a real property tax. That's how it's set up. But as I explained at a couple times at different meetings, how much your taxes is based on how much your revenues are in any given year. So if the board chooses to increase water rates, then Marty's going to put in the numbers for increased revenues on water rates into the books. That's going to result in needing to raise less <coughs> So, in other words, it's set up to be as a tax, but how much that tax will be can fluctuate depending on how much revenue you make through selling water. So the whole thing's gonna go on the tax, is what you're telling me? No, it's within our prerogative to set our water rates at such a level as that the, the, the taxes can then be adjusted. That will be up to you. The amount, amount of the board. The amount of our right monthly payment or our annual payment is, is flat. It's set once we set it, the bond in place. And we can look at it every year, correct? Well, sure. You're, you're going to owe a certain amount of money every year to pay back that bond. So Whether we raise it in taxes or water bills, it's our property. How you pay that five hundred some thousand dollars a year is up to the board. Is it going to be by increasing water rates? Is it going to be by uh, a tax? Is it going to be a combination of the two? You'll be able to determine that, and you can change it from year to year. Yeah. The way you do that is by adjusting your water rates. When you're doing a, uh, well, this is more to you. When you're doing this design, the build, design, bid, and build process, 
are you charging each one individually, or is it? That's how I'm reading it. I'm, you know, I went online and reading when it when uh, something this big, we would do it in three stages. It's telling me it, the design, the bid, and the build process is how you would build. Is that how it's done, or yeah? So yes. you would break us down. Yeah, there'll, be, there'll be a there'll be a design component, okay, okay where we develop could be 50 to 75 or more drawings, big drawings, and the contract documents. So that's the first step. And when that set of documents is submitted to the health department for review, get their approval, then we go out to advertise for bid for construction. Okay, which we put out the bid probably for could be up to a month where we solicit bids from the contractors. We open those bids. Select the lowest responsible, responsive bidder. Okay, the board then will take steps to enter into contract with that that low response, responsible bidder, and we will then we'll go to construction. And during construction, there's kind of two parts of the service. We'll provide contract administration, okay, and resident inspection. The health department, when they give you your approval, will come back and says that the construction of all of the water facilities that they approve will be have to be done within a certain amount of time and be under the what under the supervision of a licensed engineer practice or an engineer licensed to practice in New York State and then we'll go to construction and that will involve um, members of my firm uh, the water department and Mike and his, his, his staff and the contractor mm -hmm. okay. and, then we'll, and then we'll proceed for construction now I know you you put a 15% fee. It's a rough estimate of what you be charging. But are you going to use your town fee schedule when you're doing the design and everything, and or the whole project? I mean, you have a fee schedule with the town each. Yeah, we have engineers so much. Right. Yeah. That that's part of our agreement. That's just our, our standard hourly rates. Right. I understand it. But is that what you're using when you bill us for this? That would, that would be the basis of my schedule. Two fee. hours is going to be 200 bucks or 150 bucks. Yeah. And then would I be able to get a list of names of employees who work for GHD on that? Who's ever working for you? For sure, your employees. Okay, according to the town code, there'll be an engineer on site with ID during the construction of the water line. Is that what's going to happen? Is something? That will be our resident inspector. Okay. And then I'd like to have I do like either a monthly or a two-week view of the billing to the, for, to the town so we know where we're going. This can we meet once a month? Yeah, yeah that, that'll be, that would be, we would submit invoices monthly, uh, just like we do now. Okay. All right. I've never been through one of these, so it's for No, it's that's okay. It's a big project. Um, so we'll report monthly to the town board meetings. And that's basically it. Okay, so as long as we get that. All right. Okay. Okay, Brian, what else? Okay, we have, uh, there's three resolutions for the, the board to consider. The first is, to, that for the town board to declare itself as lead agency for CEPA review. And if, if you'll recall, um, a couple months ago, we did a resolution uh, where the board signaled its intent to be lead agent. We sent out notices to all of the agencies that were required to, and none of them uh, responded back that they wanted to be a lead agent, which is typical. Lewiston's the, the primary responsible agency. so. Uh, I have a, I prepared a resolution for your consideration of declaring uh, the town of Lewiston as lead agent for secret purposes. Make a motion to approve the resolution declaring the town of Lewiston as the lead agency for environmental review secret. As, as presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the, the second is also under seeker. The uh, engineers prepared the environmental assessment, the first environmental assessment form. They took into consideration the comments and whatever we received back from various agencies and completed a part two uh, and a, a part three for your consideration. There were no uh, major environmental concerns noted. And if you think about it is we're really replacing existing infrastructure that's already in the ground. We're not going into uh, areas that have not been already dug up. It's mostly highway right away, so it's not um, unexpected. And if the board's ready at this point, then we could, you could make a motion to uh, issue a negative declaration on secret. 
make a motion to accept the negative declaration uh, declaration on uh, for seeker with respect to the water project. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the third resolution is the the resolution approving the establishment of the Town Houston Water District and the construction of the water system therein with the estimated maximum cost. That resolution has been put before you. There's a number of findings and uh, and things that you make in there, including establishing where the water district will be and many of the things that we've we talked about uh, quite a bit through the past uh, months in this project. With the improvement approval of the resolution approving the establishment of the town of Lewiston Water District and construction of the water system therein at maximum cost of ten million two hundred thousand dollars second we have a motion and a second any questions on the matter yeah this is the for the project to go ahead this is for the project to go ahead if we could do a roll call vote on that okay councilman Bax. aye yes no. Supervisor Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And under old business, uh, medical bill. Um, everybody remembers we had an issue on reimbursement uh, for our employee regarding um, copay. Uh, we did an agreement that agreed to it's not going to set a past practice of the town um, so what is needed now will be a resolution to uh, approve the agreement pay the $255 claim and authorizing the uh, supervisor to sign it on that. Um, can you elaborate the circumstances again just so everybody's aware yeah so basically what happens is if you have uh, the, the policy of the town is to reimburse copay as long as you submit that with any certain time period. Right. This particular employee never got a bill from the, the, the treatment provider until after uh, the time period had elapsed. Um, that money, it's not like it goes away, it comes back to the town uh, when it's not used. So she submitted it as soon as she got the bill, it just happened to be after the time period. Um, that the town sets in its policy. So, um, because it had nothing to do with her own business or anything like that, she didn't sit on it. She presented to the town when she got it. Um, and it's something that had she gotten it earlier and presented to the town, it would have been paid for. And again, what you mentioned is you talked to the, the union so that this was not going to be a, a precedent set, setting. Exactly. Because of the unique circumstances in this particular case where it was no fault of the employee. Um, the union has signed off on the fact that it doesn't create a past practice which would bind the town going into the future. And it actually can't happen again because we got a new uh, uh, plan. So it, it would make it, it's obsolete. So this will be the last time this could even happen. So, yes. Based on the advice of the attorney, I've moved for reimbursement of the medical bill of $255 to Ms. Norwich uh, as a non binding. Action. So I can approve that, and then there's going to be another one authorizing so I can sign it. Okay. Um, motion and a second. So all, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move to authorize the supervisor to uh, uh, consummate the agreement and reimburse the $255 to Ms. Norwich. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Now moving on to the Niagara, Niagara Bible Church, Bronson Drive. Uh, I'd like to ask Mike Dashnell, is there anything more with that? Um, no. Last meeting we said we were going to discuss it at the uh, Recreation Commission committee level. We haven't had that meeting yet, so okay. we'll be doing that next. Um, I attended the uh, meeting they had with uh, Bill Conrad had up at um, the church up there with the concerned citizens about the new project up there. And one of them was a lack of facilities for kids, the playground, stuff like that. So uh, um, it might, you know, working with the recreation department, it might not be a bad idea. I know they have some concerns with, with the way the parking lot pulls directly up to the playground. There's no separation. Um, it may be a, a, a viable project to, to work with, with the church and make sure we get stuff in, you know, etched in stone and, and have the opportunity. Um, and I did reach out to the developers of that project and 
let them know that we were considering doing that and they were going to try and incorporate that somehow as well. So, on access to Yeah. So, okay. Anything on the historic preservation law amendment? That is with uh, been sent up to the county for their approval. Uh, there was a little bit of delay. It was sent to me back uh, at the beginning of July. However, when it got to me, my email system declared it a virus and sent it to quarantine without notifying me. So a couple of weeks later, I asked Donna where it was. She said she had sent it out. So I turned around and sent, approved it, and it has been sent to the county. Okay, thank you. It's on there August 21st agenda. Perfect. And the electronic message display sign. Same thing. They were they were being sent together that way when we do send them to the state uh, for approval we're only paying with one fee instead of two just separate fees. Okay. Moving on to the approval of the minutes from 724 townwide or uh, the public hearing townwide water district and a regular town board meeting. Move for approval of the 524 public hearing and townwide <coughs> water district and uh, regular town board meeting as presented. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One abstention. One abstention. Two. Okay, two. two abstentions. Okay. So three yeas and two abstentions. Okay, the 2016 annual stormwater report. This is emailed to everybody. Um, it's the standard form Mr. Ritter had circulated. Just asked that uh, it would be executed. We had actually circulated it before and approved it. Just asked that it be um, signed by the supervisor. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, sewer refund. I have two. There's one addition uh, from a Carl G. Bashira. Um, this one, everyone's received it. Yeah, it was up here. Um, there's 25,000 gallons of water. Uh, the gentleman did provide a receipt for Mr. Poole, whereby the line of his pool was replaced and make a motion to refund the amount of eight i'm sorry ninety seven dollars and forty cents to mr bashara second all in favor aye aye, aye. the second one is from mr briglio um, this particular uh, claim unfortunately has to do with one of those automated uh, water sump pumps that pumps out more water than it's running into a year some pump and, and unfortunately it was defective what's uh, more unfortunate is the, the fact that it doesn't fit our town policy um, spoke with mr ritter and what we're concerned about uh, is that if we authorize any more refunds outside of our practice or our policy it's going to turn mr ritter into um, law enforcement if you will on that issue and we don't want to do that we want to maintain our policy right. If someone's interested in amending the policy, um, we can do that later. But at this point, it doesn't meet our criteria. So, you know, well, no. well, you, know, you agree with that? Yes. Yes. You can't set a precedent. I mean, I feel bad for him, but this I do is, <laughs> I really do. Could happen to anybody, but there's specific line. guidelines we have. Is there anything we can do in our code to protect future residents on this type of issue? They have a right to this type of uh, sump pump. And they can check out their own homes. Mm -hmm. I think you just need to be vigilant, unfortunately. Okay. You this be, could be uh, running. You know, you should be able to hear if the water's Oh, running. yeah. We just replaced ours. I mean, ours was only two years old. We had to get it away. Yeah, bad. yeah, so it happens to anybody. Quite a few, yeah. quite a few people. They noticed it though before it went on. For got to the stage. You got to the stage. Well, it sounds so good when you read the advertisement for it. Well, it works. Yes. You got to be vigilant. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Good. So we'll take no action on that. Yes, I would. Yeah, I don't know. Mr. Ritter, would you mind reaching out to Mr. Brickdale for us? Sure. Thank you. Okay, fire company additions to roster. Um, Sanborn Fire Company, Sanborn Fire Company Incorporated here with submits for active membership in said fire company, the name of. Ryan Fole of 3154 Raymond Road. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is from Upper Mountain. Uh, the following person's application for membership has been approved by the Upper Mountain Volunteer Fire Company. We request that the town add their name to the Upper Mountain Volunteer Fire Company town roster. Matthew Mazlani, 691 Sarah Corp, Lewiston, New York. So 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, this one's a removal. The following person is not a member of the Upper Mountain Volunteer Fire Company. We believe she may belong to a different fire company. We request that the town remove their name from the Upper Mountain Volunteer Fire Company town roster, and that is Charlotte Monday. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to turn it over to Marty Blazek for finance. As you know, our band is scheduled for renewal. Um, we are going out to bid and we need to accept the bids on August 24th. I need the board to authorize the supervisor to award the bid to the lowest bidder. We don't know who that lowest right. bidder is going right. to be. Right. So. Yeah. We, but you need to authorize somebody because somebody has to be here on the 24th to make that choice based on the information that comes in. We've got one more year. We've, we've already approved that we were going to go out to bid. I just need to have the mechanics ready because on that date at 11 o'clock, we'd have to make a decision at who that lowest bidder and accept that bid. That's it's not processing properly in my head because to my knowledge, we've never at 11 o'clock, we have to make that decision. We always have. Just yeah. based on looking it over at the supervisor. It's, it'll base, be based on municipal solutions recommendation. There you go. I knew there was something. So we'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I need you to authorize the supervisor to sign all the pay paperwork on the sale on September 7th, so which will be based on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just for the record, Marty, could you just expand it? It's a bond and disciplinary mode being converted to a full bond. No. no. It's stay in a band. We're stay just renewing the band. One more year. For one more year. Oops, sorry. Because we want to get it to a certain level. Right. Perfect. The budget meetings, I've, I've, I've sent out to you guys a tentative schedule. Um, I didn't really hear back from anybody. I know, well, Bill Guy and I did. Um, Bill, I, I'm trying to get the date set for the times that um, we are going to interview the department heads and the um, um, the nonprofit organizations. Um, the one uh, Ryan told me tonight that there's no reason why the tentative budget couldn't be uh, uh, done on the same day as our first date of meetings in the morning because you are going to have that budget long before that that time. Um, other than that, I know that Bill Guyvin is going to miss several of those meetings. So he is. He and I have already talked about. I do preliminary meetings with the board members and all, and I'm going to try to incorporate him into as many as though, of those as I can. Um, and then I will update him on the meetings that we have if there's anything different or, or change. But was there any other uh, problems with the dates that I sent out? Oh. Are you all okay? Because it does require a commitment from you guys for two days right. to meet with everybody. So that was okay. All right, that's all I needed to know on that. I also gave you a budget adjustment for the fire department, or for the fire fund. This is just moving uh, both the insurance liability and the service awards came in under budget. And I just want to move that to the physicals because I feel like I've underestimated the cost of the physicals. And so that's just a simple budget adjustment that I sent out to you that I need you to approve. Okay, I got a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess the, the one thing that, based on the audit that um, we didn't talk about in that, is the auditors did ask that the Greenway and the hydro, the town's portion of the hydro be moved into a capital fund. And so I have established those capital funds. Uh, uh, the Greenway will be handled as an H96, and the town's portion of the hydro will be H98 where they've been in trust and agency. They really never qualified as a trust and agency account. And so this is part of our trying to clean things up. And so we have established that those uh, capital accounts and I just wanted to inform you of that. That'll be H96, H97, and H98 ultimately, right? For our capital accounts. Well, those are the, the H96 will be Greenway. H97 is the hydro or is the NIPA's no. annual, right. the NIPA H98 will be the hydro portion. So I've kept all of the NIPA H99 is yeah. also the cell. So they're all right next to each other. Yes. So that was more just to inform you of that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Marty. 
The main meeting on March is town clerk. Back in May, we forwarded a RFP to four, actually it's back in April, we sent it out to four different companies and we received some back. The town board decided not to, to move forward. We changed the RFPs a little bit to make it um, a little bit easier to get people to bid on it. That was in June. I sent it out to six people and we uh, received one bid from Killer Construction. Yes. Sorry. From um, Mike Kelly Construction for the amount of $34,882. The town has um, the two the, the funds from 2015-2016 is $18,500. The 2016-2017 funds is $10,000 for a total of $28,500. Um, so at this time, I'm asking the town board to see if we can find the additional dollars that are needed so this can be done. Otherwise, we lose the grant money. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to make the RFPs so they can come into those dollar amounts because of what we're choosing to do. And I've sent it out to so many different companies so many different times, and we're just not receiving any, any replies from There's also an issue as to whether we can do it in house or not. Is that correct? We we'll try to get some of like a rice. That's kind it's of been off the table now. That's what I understand. Yeah, that's so we need to do it out. That that, 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 that's why the RFP has changed. Right Mr. Mr. Supervisor, would it be appropriate for you and Donna and Marty to uh, meet and see if you can find some additional funding and uh, consummate this <laughs> issue? Well, I believe in our infrastructure. Well, we do, but we also have, there is, uh, you have contingency funds in the A fund, which we have not touched for 2017, that you could use that to fill in, since this is so much closer. I mean, the first bids were just astronomical. Right. They were approximately yeah. $6,000. Right. Yeah. Um, it would also, I think that, uh, and Ryan can tell me whether that's true or not, I think this also fits within our infrastructure requirements for H97. But I would probably just take it out of the contingency fund since it's there and we haven't had to use it and hopefully won't. Um, but I think that my one question down it is, are the courts in agreement that this is the work they want done? Yes, yes they've been so, involved in the whole conversation. That's what oh, I thought. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was pretty sure that was yeah. true. So because this is through the, the, the justice grant, so they need to be 100% yeah. on board with that. I would say that we need to, I mean, the, the one grant is already on its second year. So we're going to lose this money if we yeah. don't get this done. Okay. Well, so do we have the money now? That's what I'm saying is the difference, which is, oh, no, we no, physically, yes, we the do. The grants. Yes. Because he's requiring 50% down payment when signed mm -hmm. contract. Yes, we have received that grant money. Anybody call him and ask him if there's any liberal one in this? Or is that <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's nobody's actually appreciated. He's the only guy that, he's right? He's, he's the only guy. Yeah. He doesn't need the wiggle. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we've, we've pared down this project a couple of times. So as long as it meets the safety elements that we've talked about, uh, the aesthetics is nice, but we, we need to make this room safer. And that's part of this, correct? Uh, that that particular was, was no. the first time around, but no. Uh, this is just a, uh, this is all drywall. This is just the aesthetics. This is, to, this is the aesthetics mm -hmm. and um, the, the guys. If we can find the money, I'd like to go back to the safety issue too. That we talked about the railing. Oh, we can. Do this. Oops, sorry. Um, we could do this, and then we could always go back to the safety issue. Get some more. Just as long as it fits, it doesn't. We, have to, we don't have to go back and change oh, something yeah. physical that we've done. I think it would no. be a secondary. Yeah, right, right. It yeah. would be a secondary. It, in, in the safety issues, a lot of it were the window in the court. We had nothing to do with the actual courtroom, correct? It was right. the window and the handicap access and the glass. Mm -hmm. and, so it's two separate entities. I mean, what you're talking about is, you know, we already have the, um, the magnetometer. 
you know, that man. So as far as security coming in here, as long as everybody's doing their job, including the mechanical aspect, the safety issues <coughs> are in place here. Yeah, and they, at one point in the beginning, we did talk about the railings, you know, out front to keep the people back from until it is their turn to come out. That was a concern too. But that the, the majorness of this can be done, and then you can just somebody can just put a railing in. Yeah. However, you need to add that to our five-year plan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this would be like so this would be right. the this first step of the project. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The, the window and even that railing can be submitted this year under the, the court room. Okay, I talked to um, I talked to Maria, and we're going to submit for the window replacement and the safety issues for that. So if we need to add the railing part of, part of it. There's definitely room. On okay. What's most important is what's what's approved or covered in this right. particular. Right. If um, it, if this point, yeah. It does not overlap or something that we're going to have to tear out. No, 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 phase. no, no, no. It's the first phase of this project. So, so this is a topic I've not gotten involved in at all. Right. Are there guidelines on how you're supposed to set up a courtroom? Yes. Yes, sir. So that we're, so we know what we're doing? The judge yeah. in the front. Well, this is also used as your main meeting room, so I don't, I can't answer it. You have to follow for the courts, just the courts. This is used as a meeting room for all kinds of people, all kinds of things. No, I think we're good there. So, what I would say, Marty, by the fact that we're getting this grant, twenty thousand five hundred dollars plus Marty staying, we do have the money in the contingency fund, and I would ask for a motion to approve uh, moving forward. Do, do, do these the fact that we only got one bid back? Are we good there? I think that's an issue. Okay, yeah. we're supposed to have three written. Um, it doesn't say if you send out half a dozen requests and you only get one back, you can move forward. It says you need three right now. Um, so I would be of the opinion that you can send this out to more people. Do we know why they're not responding? No, I don't. I, I can't answer that. They're all local. You know, they're local people. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, I've sent, and I've sent each time, um, each time that I've sent them out, it's to the same six people. and each different RFP as they've been changing and the very like the first time we got people but their numbers were just you know, 50 sixty thousand dollars and we just we that wasn't even something we we're even used to it was a totally different uh, oh, presentation okay. that they were presenting okay. we, we well, here's the narrowing problem. it down here's the problem if, if, if legal saying we can't accept it then we're going to have to find three written bits somehow some way um, See, I'm just you know, I mean, I, I would offer to to assist in this, and you know, I can I can call these contractors to find out, you know, what the reason is for not submit something, know. right? May yeah. also be the same. We may you know, maybe maybe see rewrite right in spring and summer. They're busy out, out, outdoor projects. And yeah, it could be. Right. But whatever. I mean, they but they also need to be setting up. You know, they need to fill the kitty before the fall because you know they have to keep stuff coming. Mm -hmm. uh, this is good winter work. Bernie, can you speak to the uh, the vulnerability of these funds as far as uh, us losing them? Really and truly, we're okay. okay. We've got the money to do it. We just need to do it. We need to accomplish it. That's we need to close this thing out and get it done. Okay. So, but nobody's looking to take pull the money out of the fund right away. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Do you think we can get three, two, at least two more beds in the next two weeks? I can, I can follow up with these contractors and just, you know, well, I, say, I appreciate that though. So you know, I know Donna, you won't be pleased with this, but I say we table it for two weeks and try and get two more beds to make it a valid bid. And, uh, dog control concerns. It has been brought to my attention that um, what we have a dog control officer and we have we had a deputy dog control officer. The deputy dog control officer has now moved to a different department. But prior to that, if um, individuals called a police, if police called or individuals called and said that they had a dog and they were unable to get a hold of either one of those gentlemen, they would call me and I would go get the dog. I have been told by Ag and Marcus that even though I am an employee of the town, picking up dogs is working outside of my job duties unless the board says that it's okay. Like I could be the so assistant. <laughs> 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 so when I'm driving, you know, to Wilson in this van, and something happens to me and the dog, the town can just say, "Well, you really shouldn't have done that." 
<laughs> is what Ag and Marcus is saying. Say poor uh, so that's the concern. That's my you know. And in, in my opinion, it's not the police officers, it's not the residents' sure. concern to have to worry about the dog. I mean, well, I gotta, commend, I gotta commend Donna because it's something she wants to do um, to help out um, other places. You'd have to probably hire somebody else or they, you know, make somebody else the, another assistant dog catcher. So I appreciate the fact that Donna likes, enjoys doing it, wants to do it. So uh, whatever we have to do, um, Brian, do you know what we need to? I'd have to look into it. I don't know if uh, Joe or Brian. Have I mean, we wouldn't make her the assistant dog board, but it Add it to her job description. <laughs> Just put another line in. <laughs> you said Aggie Marcus. Aggie Marcus. Yeah. Aggie Marcus is yeah. telling us that, yeah. Yeah. She told them that she picked up the dog one time, and they were like, whoa, you can't do that. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So she wants to go above and beyond, and they don't want They say you can't do that. Unless so. we give you a title. Unless, unless you're appointed. Uh, oh, it, actually, it says here, unless I have been appointed a DCO. I, I don't want to be appointed a DCO. You can, like, do me the DCO the third, can you something deputy, like that. Deputy, deputy? Uh, deputy, deputy. Deputy, deputy. You know, like, like I said, it's just assistant for those executive executive secretary. There's been at least four times where that's happened. Whether sure, they've caught them at the border, they're stuck in cars, you know, the police call and say, well, you know, right. this kid's going to jail, he can't take his dog with him. So I went and got the dog. Beautiful dog. <laughs> but then I had to drive it to Wilson, and she's saying that I should have never done that. Yeah. Because so. the town wouldn't have been liable. Well, just curious, <coughs> why don't you want to be? Why don't you want to be a DCO? You just don't want that as under. Well, because we have a DCO. She wants to be a DCO the third. I just want to. I just want to be able to. If if neither one of the gentlemen can be contacted, which is what has happened, then well, I just want to they call me. In town always to how many DCOs we could have, correct? So, so, I don't think so. so we'll table it for now, but thank you, okay. Donald. Do you want to touch base on the other issue with the, uh, the dogs? Yes, I do. So okay. with that being said, um, the town of Lewiston, um, later on in the meeting, I hope is going to sign a, a contract with Wilson to accept our dogs. But in the meantime, um, I had a meeting with, um, who might be with? Uh, Supervisor, myself, Tim Masters, the Water Department, um, Fire and the highway department and the town is looking into um, building our own shelter with um, three kennels um, we would like to locate it on in the back here um, after the meeting you know with the, with the gentleman they've given us a direction which we need to go to go into but the first thing that needs to be done is some type of plan um, and uh, to, to submit to Tim, for Tim to say, yeah, this can be built this way, um, the, where, the, where the water lines are, because it has to have certain things by Ag and Markets um, <coughs> say so, it has to have certain things. So I took the liberty and went ahead and gave um, some of the stuff to Mr. Lannon already um, to just get the ball rolling. I think that this is an important thing to do because we don't, we have to drive them all the way to Wilson. Um, it's been said that if an officer does pick up the dog, they would be able to bring it here themselves if they if they want to be DCO 9 and 10 and 11 and 12, you know. Um, it's just, it's, it's going to be, it'll just be easier for everything. Yeah. And it, I mean, it'll pay for itself eventually. I mean, yeah. it's the Wilson, the agreement with Wilson, and I'll move to that. Um, you know, we had, we utilized uh, Lewiston Vet. We utilized Lewis and Vet previously, and they no longer wanted to do it. So we had no place, we had no home for our dogs, which under agriculture marketing law, we have to have a place to put our dogs. So we reached out to Wilson, and at Wilson, we're, we're at $50 a day. Yes, it's tough. Um, that's fine because it would be passed on to whoever's dog it was if they stepped forward. The problem is if we go five days without a dog owner coming forward, the town pays for that. So um, we had some, some, some substantial bills piling up from Wilson, and Don and I sat down and said, well, we should do something here. We looked at the uh, highway garage. You don't have the infrastructure down there with the water and the electrical. And, and uh, so um, we, we talked to, like I said, we had the meeting, and we came up with that idea. So um, I, I'm all for it. Um, we have a town clerk that is uh, very willing to, to do the work. 
Um, so we're going to move forward on that. And it, it, it's just kind of a, a heads up that this is going on. We don't need any approval. Do we have the funding for it? Uh, yes. We had the uh, H97, is it? Yes, H97. Infrastructure. Marty, you can put the numbers also on the expenses that we expended each year on, on that? I do. I have not at this point in time. I, Don, I've asked Donna. Donna has. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. When we were discussing going with Wilson, you pulled out the difference between what it costs. The SPCA is not. The yeah. SPC you know, was a ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Plus the time to get to Wilson if it's if it's a dog that's, uh, you know, it's just easier. Yeah. I mean, Wilson, really Wilson's been great about coming out there, but they're, you know, um, the vet care and all that. And we're, we're working with the uh, Tonawanda SBCA, correct? Yes. To have an outlet after five days where the dogs would go. Um, so. Uh, is it, is it Tonawanda SBCA on, on the military road? They moved. Yeah, they moved out to uh, West Seneca. Right. Yeah. 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 Facility out but, through it. But it's a no kill shelter, correct? That's what I was in, uh, wondering about. Yeah. So. Um, but having said that, why don't we move right, right into the dog sheltering agreement? So, um, the boy went and moved to authorize the dog sheltering agreement with the town of Wilson and two simple resolutions. Second. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second, real quick on discussion. Uh, Ryan, this, this meets your, you, you've gone through and you've worked with uh, Kyle Andrews from the town of Wilson. <coughs> As to legal form, obviously the terms of the agreement were between the town of Wilson right. and the town of Lewiston, but as to legal form, it has been approved. Okay. And paragraph 13 does give us a 30 day exit clause. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Authorized the supervisor to sign this said agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. I've got two sources lined up for this. Right. Uh, so I really need to get these plans and estimates put together relatively quickly because one's going to be closing soon. Okay. Not the egg and market, but I'm the second source. So, again, just so Mr. Landon needs to get to work. Can we get Parks and Recs out of the basement, too? Yeah, thanks. Put them in the dark. <laughs> so, put them out there in the dark. You, you have two people to, or two grants that are out there? I got two sources to go after. One's the agate market and the other one's another source. Excellent. Thanks, Bernie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.